guys, Badger Knight here, and today we're going to be doing something very, very special and very fun. There's three things that I love about life, alcohol, dumb nerd stuff, and Mass Effect. And we're going to go and kind of combine all those things today to make some cocktails. The Mass Effect Trilogy is one of my favorite like bits of video gaming history ever. It's, it's one of my favorite video game franchises out there, so I thought I'd commemorate the release of the upcoming Legendary Edition, which should be releasing in less than a month by the time I get this video out. I'd go ahead and commemorate the occasion by making some... Mass Effect themed cocktails. Some of these drinks are going to be from my own design, and some of them are actually mentioned by some of the characters within the game itself. For those of you familiar with Mass Effect, and more specifically the third game, are familiar with the Citadel DLC. In this DLC, uh, Shepard, uh, i.e. the player, can throw a massive party right before the end of the game. You know, you can get all your, all your squad mates together, sort of hang out with all your best friends or whatever. And this party is part of the Citadel DLC, the Normandy's favorite lesbian, Samantha Trainer. We start to serve cocktails and other drinks. Trainer actually goes ahead, uh, uh, to Shepard's bar and makes everyone a couple drinks, some cocktails for the party. And they're all, of course, Mass Effect themed. We have a drink called the Full Biotic Kick, the Memory Stealer, the Quad Kicker, uh, a Tasty Tankard, which is something that Grunt orders, which we'll get into in a second, uh, or Robo Loco, all this other cool stuff. But the drink that kind of interested me was something that she mixed with, I think, uh, fruit juice, vodka, cognac, white wine, and blue thessia. I might not know dancing or crazy stunts, but fancy drinks are right in my wheelhouse. So I decided to go ahead and kind of take from trainers' ideas and wisdom of mixology and do my own sort of Mass Effect themed cocktails here. So some of these are from the game, some of them I found online, and some of them I actually concocted myself. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm Badger Knight, and these are Mass Effect cocktails. Starting things off, we're gonna make something called a Tasty Tankard, which is actually surprisingly complex, which kind of surprises me, because this is the drink that our favorite little badass, uh, Krogan, grunt orders from a trainer, because he read it on the extra net or something. I read about something called a Tasty Tankard. Irish cream, coconut rum, iced chocolate, and butterscotch schnapps, if Shepard has it. So the four ingredients for a Tasty Tankard are butterscotch schnapps, we have some Bailey's Irish cream, and then we have some Kahlua. The last part of the drink that Trainer lists off is something called uh, iced chocolate, which that makes this drink insanely complicated, so much so that we actually need to leave the set and go to my kitchen. Essentially what this is, this is just a milkshake. We're gonna go ahead and mix up cocoa powder, uh, little bits of Hershey's chocolate, uh, some milk, and sort of heat it up into a saucepan and then blend it all together with some chocolate ice cream. Um, I'm sure you're, you're going to be able to cut corners on certain parts of this drink. If you wanted to, say, skip out on the thickness of the milkshake, or even say, I don't know, uh, you could just mix up something like, say, milk uh, and some chocolate syrup, and if you have like a blender, throw in a little bits of ice cream, and then sort of mix that up in like a blender, blend it up, uh, put it in a drink, and then you can put in the, all the other spirits and stuff in the drink. But just for you guys, I went ahead and made this the painful way. So. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you give the video a like and maybe consider subscribing you to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers, and at this rate, we're only about, I don't know, like less than 300 away, or a little over 300 away, so I would really appreciate it if you guys could send me over there. I would really like to do this a bit more often, but anyway, let's go to the kitchen. Alright, now in order to start making a tasty tankard for Grunt, we first need to make something called iced chocolate, and in order to do so, you'll need the following ingredients. 180 milliliters or three quarters of a cup of whole or low-fat milk, one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder, I will be using Hershey's for the purposes of this video because I just happen to have some on hand, eight ounces or 115 grams of chocolates. I will again be using Hershey's. Keep in mind that the big giant Hershey's chocolate bars you normally see at stores like say Publix or Target are only seven ounces. So you might have to go buy some of the smaller ones that come in these little baggies. However, do keep in mind that these little tiny chocolate bars amount to an ounce and a half with the whole entire bag containing about six ounces of chocolate. So of course, measure that off so we can get eight ounces. You also need some ice. Uh, this may vary on how chilled or cold you want your drink. I would recommend having a cup and a half of ice. Also keep in mind that the amount of alcohol that we're going to be putting into this thing may melt the ice anyway. In the event that this happens to you, I would recommend leaving this in the fridge to chill for maybe half an hour or 20 minutes. Anyway, back on track. Then you're also going to need two or three scoops of chocolate ice cream or chocolate sorbet. I bought this particular brand of ice cream this time, but again, do what's best for you. I should also probably mention that this recipe makes two cups of iced chocolate, so if you want to experiment with different spirits other than Bailey's and Kahlua, or if you want to try out different types of chocolate or ice cream, you guys can go ahead and do that. All you would essentially need to do is half the portions. 
Firstly, in a small saucepan, heat two-thirds of the milk with cocoa powder, just until it begins to boil. And I stress, small saucepan. Make sure you keep the pan over low heat and keep stirring so the milk doesn't burn. After the cocoa powder and milk is all nice and mixed up, remove the pan from the heat and then drop in the chocolates. In hindsight, I should have chopped up the bigger chunks of chocolate before throwing in the pan to make the mixing process a bit easier, so I would advise that you guys do the same at home as well. Anyway, once the mixture is all nice and thick, let it sit and cool until it's at room temperature. Once that's done, add your ice to the blender, the chocolate mixture, the rest of the milk, and the two to three scoops of chocolate ice cream. And then we ask yourselves deep philosophical questions, such as, will it blend? To which the answer would be, duh, obviously. <laughs> Make sure you blend all the ingredients until it's completely smooth. Once you sort everything else out, pour your mixture into two different glasses. And if you have some on hand, top each drink with some whipped cream, shaved chocolate, or some sprinkles. All right, with that all done, let's get back to the set and try this out for real. So to complete the taste of Tangard here beyond the iced chocolate, we're going to need one ounce of Bailey's Irish cream right here. And then we're also going to need half an ounce of the Kahlua and the butterscotch schnapps, respectively. Now, I already went ahead and mixed that into this drink. Going to go ahead and mix up everything right here. Here we go. Down the hatch, one taste of tankard. Let's see if Grom knows his stuff, yeah? What did Krogan say? Kerbal, that's it. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Mm. Although, I do think it needs one thing. By default, Grom was actually correct. Right, okay? I mean, you can't go wrong. We have Irish cream, liquid butterscotch in alcohol form, and then we have uh, some Kahlua, which is, you know, coffee and rum liqueur. However, I do think we might need something else. Like, give me one second. I think this I think this drink actually needs something a bit more tropical, right? Uh, I mean, we, we basically just have uh, candy in this drink, right? Let's have something a little bit more. So maybe we need something, I don't know, something coconutty and rummy. So we got a ball of Malibu here crack this open. We're going to give this, I think, half an ounce. So, half an ounce of Malibu going in. Uh, that's a little bit more, but, you know, who cares? It's fine. I'm going to give that another bit of a stir. Yeah, here we go. What did the, what did the Krogan say? Krabal! Victory or death, roughly. Let's see if I die. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah, okay. The, uh, ooh. Maybe a little too much on the Malibu, and maybe I didn't mix it right. Yeah, that's that's really really good. Um, that's that's actually really impressive. So Grunt does know his stuff. This is a very very good drink, and I recommend you guys make it. Here's the ingredients. If you guys want to make it yourself, uh, however, the whole iced chocolate thing is going to be a little bit more complex than needed to be. The drink itself isn't cold anymore because the amount of alcohol I put into it. You're going to lose all the all the coldness anyway, unless you you know stick all the alcohol in the cup and then throw it in the fridge for maybe uh, an hour or two, maybe chill it. But otherwise, you're, it's just chocolate milk with some alcohol in it. Unless you guys really want the thickness of that shake and you have to make it really fresh, I recommend maybe just using uh, milk and chocolate syrup and then maybe mixing that up in a blender with some, uh, some chocolate ice cream. But yeah, otherwise, this is very good. I enjoy this. With the Tasty Tanker out of our way, I think it's time to check our alignment. We'd have two Mass Effect themed shots here called the Paragon and the Renegade. How many Asari died because I demanded their help? None. Shepard, that isn't true. You've been warning your people for four years, Liara. There's not a damn thing you should feel guilty about. Paragon Shepard is uh, a sort of warrior diplomat, as I like to say. He's out to show uh, his friends and enemies alike that humanity is indeed one of the most honorable races in the Milky Way galaxy. He tries to understand both sides of a situation and then come to a diplomatic conclusion. We're gonna go ahead and try and reflect that attitude through a drink. So we're gonna need here our ingredients for this drink. We're gonna need half an ounce of whipped vodka. I chose Veil whipped cream vodka. Then we're also going to need some blue curacao. And then the recipe that I'm looking at right now actually calls for some mint schnapps. Now, I can't justify going out to the liquor store and spending $10 on, on a, I don't know, a, a mixer I won't use. So, we're just going to use Sprite instead. If you guys have the capital to go out and spend on, uh, on you know, uh, a liqueur like that or a mixer like that, go ahead. Uh, it would probably make the drink a little bit better, but as of right now, this is what we're going with. So, let's go ahead and mix everything up. So, again, we're going to need half an ounce of the whipped vodka. This actually smells a lot like Malibu, and I actually shouldn't really be surprised by that, but... Yet I am. Half an ounce of our schnapps. And then, and then of course everything goes into a, um, 
into our little mixer thing because we need to actually mix it up and then serve it in a shot glass. And then the recipe also calls for a dash of blue curacao, which of course means pour the entire bottle. Two shots, and this should give it a nice little blue color. We're gonna go ahead and shake this up in a glass and then strain it into a shot glass and then pour ball. Yeah, that smells pretty good. Oh no, the cocktail shaker. But yeah, here we go. Take that and then strain it into a glass. Oh yeah, look at that, wow. Look at that. That is brilliant. So, as the Krogan saying, core ball, victory or death. Let's hear, let's hope I don't die from this. Wow, yeah, that's really good. You know, I'm gonna retract my previous statement. I, I really should have went out and cut some mint chops for that because, wow. The coldness of the ice, in addition to the uh, the whipped cream vodka with the blue curacao itself, uh, admittedly, I, you probably should put a little bit more, maybe like say, quarter an ounce, and if you really wanna say, if, if your shot glass is big enough, or if you wanna make this into like an actual cocktail, you could, in theory, size up the proportions a little bit, uh, come out with a, uh, a sort of uh, blue curacao minty uh, whipped cream flavor. Yeah, this is really, really good. And uh, I'm thoroughly regretting not going out and buying the, that mint schnapps now, but uh, here we are. The ice helps it, helps, uh, I don't know, sort of temper the alcohol a little bit, make it a little bit more palatable, so it's not like room temperature or whatever. Uh, the blue curacao gives it that nice little blue paragon flavor in addition to the whipped cream vodka and our schnapps. Uh, that is a very, very nice drink. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and examine the other side of the Mass Effect morality spectrum, being the Renegade shot. Patrol, this is outpost. Wrong move. Now the recipe I'm using calls for uh, three fourths an ounce of Fireball Salmon Whiskey, and then it also calls for um, Pepar Vodka. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's peppermint because uh, the peppermint would actually go really, really nice with the cinnamon and the grenadine. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any, and uh, that special kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that weird candy cane bottle that Smartoff sells, uh, I think they only keep that exclusive to the holidays. And uh, again, I couldn't exactly go out uh, and justify buying some mint schnapps and maybe making some peppermint out of that. Yeah, so again, we're going to unfortunately have to substitute the Sprite, but again, if you guys at home have some of that uh, mint schnapps or some peppermint stuff uh, that you can mix up into this. If you guys have that, do tell me how it turns out because I'm actually genuinely curious. But anyway, let's get started with the Renegade shot. All right, so we have a new cup of ice here and we're gonna go ahead and get started with the Renegade shot. So again, we need we need three quarters of an ounce of uh, Fireball Whiskey. Woo! Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a Fireball, all right, yeah. Here we go. A splash of Grenadine. Again, since I don't have the peppermint vodka, we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and substitute some Sprite for this. It should be vodka. Mm -hmm. Well, tell you what, instead of instead of doing that and stuff, we're gonna go ahead and just throw in uh, a splash of the uh, Veil whipped cream vodka, and then we'll we'll um, again throw in a, a splash of Sprite. Now, I'm I'm actually kind of worried how the Sprite's gonna mix with the cinnamon because the peppermint would actually be really, really good with this, but I don't have that, so uh, this might be legitimately awful. Fill the glass up with ice and shake. And then take everything out. And then again, strain into a shot glass. And we should get a nice red color from the grenadine and the fireball whiskey. That's almost pinkish. But yeah, let's give it a, give it a bit of a waff. Oh yeah, you can definitely smell the cinnamon in there. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the most prevalent thing about the drink, so it wouldn't really surprise me. And it's also nice and cold, which is nice. That should really help it go down. Otherwise, it'd just be chugging straight uh, liquid cinnamon. But yeah, I should I should stop talking. But maybe I'm not really feeling up to this, guys. You know, uh, I'm not exactly sure I really want this drink. Wow, yeah, that's, mmm. Yeah, if we pair that up with everything else, uh, again, the, the whipped cream vodka actually really does help a lot. I was really worried that we didn't have any any other flavor to sort of complement the um, the cinnamon, but the creaminess of the vodka sort of helped it go down a little bit in addition to how the ice sort of kept the drink a bit cold. And uh, the grenadine helped with the color and the flavor as well. And the Sprite added a little bit of a fizziness to it that also helped with the cinnamon. So yeah, overall, that was really, really nice. I really did enjoy that. Yeah, if you guys actually want to make this drink legit, um, again, here's the ingredients that I use. Let me know about the results down in the comments section below. I'm sure it'll be good. I'm, and I'm actually like, legitimately curious about how that'll turn out. Yeah, let's move on to actually some of the, the main drinks. Time to rumble. <laughs>
We're gonna move on to a drink called the Full Biotic Kick now, away from our alignment shots. This is a drink that Caden Alenko orders from Trainer, and it's a reference to how he accidentally murdered a Turian while at uh, Biotic Boot Camp. On the subject, uh, for a second as a quick tangent while I get everything ready, the game makes uh, Commander Vernus, the guy who Caden accidentally kills with a Full Biotic Kick to the face, seems more of like a, a tough guy who accidentally broke, uh, what is his name, what's her name, Rana's arm. Uh, the girl Kaden was sweet on, but in the actual comic that covers him, uh, Vernus is a straight up asshole, and I don't feel any remorse for the guy. He uses like stuff like water, food, sort of uh, bait uh, his his students, which are you know human biotics like Kaden, into you know breaking, I guess. And uh, as Rana, like they're in the comic, they're tasked with going this this really big complex structure with uh, with their biotics. Uh, Vernus holds out a glass of water uh, in front of Rana, and she goes, "Oh, thanks," and then. He fucking breaks her arm, not like, you know, like a, a hairline fracture or whatever, like, he fucking uses biotics to pull out her forearm bone, like, out, out of her skin, and it's, she starts bleeding everywhere, she's in serious pain, and then Caden cuts loose and fucking kills him. Needs to say, my respect for Caden has grown immensely since I started reading the comics, you guys should too. Anyway, we're gonna make a cocktail theater on that called the Full Biotic Kick. So in order to make a full biotic kick, we're going to need a one and one quarter ounce of bourbon. Uh, the recipe recommend, recommends uh, Maker's Mark, but I have a different brand, which I'll show you in a second. Half an ounce of spiced rum. Uh, they, rec they recommend Captain Morgan's for that, but I actually don't have any Captain Morgan's on hand or any uh, other spiced rum for that matter. So we're just going to substitute that for some Fargo whiskey. I know we're putting bourbon and whiskey together, but it's all for the flavor, isn't it? It shouldn't really matter that much. And then we're going to need a quarter ounce of triple sec. And then we're just going to go ahead and fill that up with ginger beer right here. So let's go ahead and get started. So as for the bourbon and or whiskey I'm going to be using, is uh, we're going to be using blackened whiskey here. Now this is a Metallica special brand of whiskey that they recently came out with. I got this for Christmas. Don't worry about, you know, you know, me lording this over you or whatever. It just, it literally just tastes like Jameson. So if you guys like Jameson, just imagine, just substitute Jameson for this. This is just something that I wanted for Christmas. Uh, with the box set that came with it with all the vinyl records and stuff. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, and if you guys, of course, have Maker's Mark, go ahead and use that uh, in substitute of this. But we're going to go ahead and use Blackened because we can. In you go. Time to rumble! Time to rumble! Time to rumble! Time to rumble! Time to rumble. Uh, I don't think we need strain it, per se. I mean, we're just going to fill it up with ginger beer, so yeah, here we go. It's got a nice little orange color. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open up our little balls of ginger beer here, and we're just gonna fill it up a little bit. And there we go. Actually, it kind of looks like a beer. Yeah, that ginger beer is is um, it's a very overpowering sort of smell. I can't I can barely smell the cinnamon in it, and uh, I can kind of smell the whiskey in it, but not really much else. So. Here we go. Uh, as Krogan say, core ball. And we're already kind of in deep here, so uh, here's hoping I don't die. That's quite good. Uh, the Fireball Whiskey is actually not awful in this. It's actually pretty good. You know, this really, really nice sort of cinnamony flavor. The ginger beer actually complements the Fireball Whiskey immensely, and it's very, very good. Uh, and it actually kind of overpowers wh whatever else I put in this with the, the triple sec and uh, blackened whiskey, which is unfortunate. Oh, actually, no, wait, there's, there's the whiskey. Yeah, this is quite good. Damn. All right. I call that a success. Um, and it actually has a bit of a, a spicy kick because of the, uh, the fireball whiskey and the, uh, uh, the blackened whiskey. I don't taste the triple sec at all. So if you guys are, are looking to make this at home, maybe bring the, the, the dosage of the triple sec up to maybe like a, a three quarters of an ounce, maybe. But then again, I didn't use uh, the correct... Uh, spirits for this, you were supposed to use rum, but hey, this isn't actually too bad. I really like this. Uh, so yeah, I call this a success. Excellent job. Okay, so now that we've talked about one Vermeer survivor, we might as well talk about the other one, right? This drink is going to be based around Ashley Williams. The original recipe called this drink the Chief. I was thinking of calling it the Williams, but I think, upon further reflection, I think I'm going to call it, with all due respect, Kiss My Ass. Which is in reference to a line that Ashley has during the opening part of the of the Vermeer mission, where she and Caden argue about who should go with uh, Captain Kirahi's uh, Solarian STG team. Why is it that whenever someone says, with all due respect, they really mean kiss my ass? Fun fact, I'm actually working on a uh, character analysis for Ashley Williams as part of 
a larger series that has been running on my YouTube channel for, for, for quite some time now. I call this series Economy of a Character. In this series, I take a serious examination to some very specific characters which speak to me. In other words, characters that I find compelling and well written. At this present time, I've done episodes on Talizor of Us Normandy, an episode on Lear of Sony, an episode on Garrus, and uh, if the stars align and if I get this video out fast enough, I should have already done a character analysis on both Ashley and Miranda. So if you guys want to go ahead and check that video out, link will be in the description and also a link will be in a card that will appear somewhere above my my face. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to um, the Ashley Williams themed drink, which again is called, with all due respect, Kiss My Ass. So for this drink, we need something that captures the sort of sassiness of, of uh, Ashley. She's tough, very abrasive, and we need a drink to sort of match that. So again, this is the recipe for, with all due respect, Kiss My Ass. We need one ounce of vodka, uh, we need chambord, we need some lemon juice, and we need to fill it up with lemonade. So we're basically making a grape vodka lemonade here. All right, so uh, in the original case, we're gonna need something, uh, the original recipe calls for something called Chambord. Now, I don't have Chambord, nor do I really wanna buy it. I can't justify spending money on something like that, but uh, we do have something that I could substitute. Now, by all accounts, Chambord is supposed to be this sort of lavender, uh, sort of grapey flavor. I don't really have something like that. I do, however, have raspberry syrup, like simple, simple sugar. So we're gonna go ahead and substitute that, and maybe add, add another thing of uh, vodka. So say, Say half an ounce of vodka. Now, of course, there's this one famous scene in, in Mass Effect where Ashley uh, and James get together and they get they get all passed out on the floor. But um, unfortunately, and luckily luckily for me, I don't actually know what alcohol they drink, so I don't have to do that. <laughs> you guys are welcome to do that. I'm not going to. So that's that's about say half an ounce of raspberry simple sugar. I suppose I could I could use grenadine, but. Uh, the raspberry will complement the lemonade quite nicely. I'm not sure what the recipe also calls for uh, half an ounce of lemon juice and then asks me to fill it with lemonade. That's that's a little weird, but I'm sure it'll be good anyway. So this is going to be half an ounce of lemon juice. And then of course I'm going to uh, I'm going to assume that we shake it. All right, here we go. Let's strain the ice badger. Yeah, that's fine. As always, let's take a quick whiff. Oh yeah, you can definitely smell the raspberry. And we need to put the lemonade in still. Uh, this is uh, just some sparkling lemonade to give it that little bit of extra flavor. But yeah, there we go. It's got a nice little pinkish flavor. I'm sure Ashley wouldn't really like that, but hey, totally fine. Oh yeah, you can smell the lemonade and the raspberry. This, this is gonna be really good. All right, uh, Corbal. <laughs> Yeah, that's just lemonade and raspberry. Um, I can't, I can't taste the vodka. Okay, maybe a little bit less of the raspberry simple sugar, but otherwise, this is really good. I mean, it's, it's, it's a raspberry lemonade, essentially. It's sparkling raspberry lemonade with some vodka and thrown into it, so. Can't really go wrong with that, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's the vodka. Whew! Yeah. That was weird. But hey, I mean, this isn't this isn't terrible. It's really hot in my studio right now, so uh, it is. This is very very refreshing. That is quite good. Um, yeah, and, and as I get to the middle of the drink, I can taste more of the vodka. So, with all due respect, this drink is fantastic, and you guys should have one. <laughs> maybe maybe a, either a little bit more vodka, or maybe less of the uh, raspberry simple syrup, uh, or maybe even less of the lemonade. And uh, I, I just remembered. I can't exactly taste the lemon either because of the lemonade, so I'm not even sure if this is really necessary. I mean, I actually kind of like this more than say like the full biotic kick. The tasty tankard is still king. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I could, I can, I can make a couple of these, like say, you know, on a hot day on the on the beach, just chilling. Yeah, I call this a winner. Very, very good. Now, if you'll excuse me, Liara needs a shadow brocatini, no lime. <laughs> All right, next drink we're gonna be modeling after everyone's favorite Asari, uh, Lady Artisoni. And again, I did a video on her analyzing her full character arc as part of my Dichotomy of the Character series. It's one of my favorite videos and one of my best videos that I think I've uploaded on my YouTube channel so far. I'm very, very proud of it. So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, uh, again, check the link in the description or click the card up here to uh, watch that particular video. I'll take it to a playlist containing all those video essays and whatnot. So 
yeah, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the recipe that I found online calls for a half an ounce of scotch whiskey, three quarters of an ounce of uh, blue, blue curacao, and a quarter ounce of lime juice, and then uh, champagne and lemonade to fill. Uh, now, I'm not fancy, I don't drink champagne. I do have that lemonade from the last drink, so we're gonna go ahead and actually use up the rest of that right now. This is the one drink that I'm legitimately curious what I'm supposed to shake or stir, because you know there's that whole James Bond meme, uh, you know, some martini, uh, shake it, not stir it, or whatever. Uh, here, hold on. Do you shake or stir martinis? Basically, any booze-forward drink should be stirred. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, straight from Edie herself. So again, we're going to be using uh, our blackened whiskey. This isn't necessarily uh, scotch whiskey, but, you know, it's the only one that I do have. Other brands are available, as it were. If you guys have something a bit different, go ahead and do that. But this is the one that I happen to have on hand. All right, so we have everything that we need here. We have our blue curacao, we have our whiskey, and we have our uh, lime juice. All right, so we're going to need, uh, again, we're going to need three quarters of an ounce of our blue curacao here. Half an ounce of our scotch whiskey. A quarter ounce of our lime juice. And then, of course, we'll fill it up with uh, rest of our lemonade here shortly. Uh, Alright. Yeah. That, that smells like whiskey. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I guess we need to strain it. Same thing as the Paragon shot. We actually have uh, a much deeper blue color now. And then, of course, we just fill it with lemonade. It actually gives it a nice little pale blue color. It actually kind of looks like Ron Lane Ale. Yeah, there we go. Nice little blue drink. And on the hatch. That's not bad. Um, not my favorite drink. Let me just try and stir this up a little bit. It makes it with the lemonade with the spirits. Um, I'm not so sure about that. That, mmm. I, I might have put a bit too much lemonade in there. There's still tiny hints of the blue curacao. It's mostly overpowered by by the uh, by a, a really strong sense of, of lime. But I, I do taste the, the the whiskey that I put in it. So you know, there's that. And all in all, it, it does kind of go together very well. But I would really call this exceptional. Not gonna lie, not that great. I think the strength actually kind of depends on the whiskey that you're using. I know because I just taste the. The blackened whiskey that I have uh, that I put in the drink, but a uh, little uh, Jameson y smoky undertone that we have. Yeah, not that exceptional or or perfect, I would say. It's not really good, but it doesn't suck either. It's very average. Yeah, anyway, we're gonna move on to the next big thing. Just so you know, I'm running a fever, I've got a nasty cough, and my sinuses are filled with something I can't even describe and it was totally worth it. Okay, with that out of the way, we are now going to make a cocktail that revolves around Mass Effect's best girl, Talizor of Us Normandy. And uh, I like to think that this, this cocktail um, is representative of Talimancers everywhere, like myself. Shameless plug again, I actually did a video covering Talizor's entire character arc on this very YouTube channel. So if you guys want to go ahead and check that out, again, part of my Deconomy for Character series, link will be in the description, and in the card above. Tally, of course, will drink anything that comes through a straw, so we're gonna go ahead and try and capture that, that sort of flavor, and we need something that's sort of uh, violet or purple color to uh, sort of bring out that flavor or that, that look for the drink that we're about to make for Tally, so let's get started. This drink is called the Keyless Lemonade. The original recipe calls for one ounce of Parfait Amour, three quarters of Mandarin liqueur, half an ounce of vodka, and lemonade to fill. We're making a lot of lemonade drinks. The recipe calls for something called Parfait Amour. Now, I did try to get this before uh, the video or before I started filming, but unfortunately, uh, my local liquor stores don't have it. And if I try to order it online, it's like something ridiculous for shipping. And the, the liquor itself is like $20, which, eh, okay, fine. But the shipping was like $30, and I'm like, no, no way, I can't do that, uh-uh. So we're gonna have to improvise once again here. Uh, Parfait Amour is supposed to be sort of like grape and vanilla flavored with some hints of lavender, but I don't have that. I replaced the Parfait Amour with some wine that I just happen to have on hand. Now, it doesn't say anything about ice, uh, and I, I'm aware that we're using wine. You're not supposed to put ice inside of wine, but this is a cocktail, and... By God, it is my cocktail. So, we have one ounce of our wine. Then we have our uh, Mandarin Cello Moray's uh, Mandarin, Mandarin liqueur. Three quarters ounce of that. So we should get like a, a, a wine, orangey sort of Mandarin grape flavor with some vodka. Here we are. I'm going to shake this because I feel like it. Ah! And then lemonade to fill. 
Hopefully that's the last fucking lemonade drink I'll be making today. <laughs> Down the hatch. Kerbal! Not, not Kerbal. Um, uh, kill us alive, everyone. Okay, I, hmm. Wine and a cocktail, who would've thought? This is actually really good. Wow, nice. Um, I really like that. In retrospect, maybe without the ice would have been uh, a good idea, and then just straight into the glass. Uh, maybe just chill the glass a little bit, but yeah, it, it tastes like, it tastes exactly like you expect. Uh, lemonade, some cheap wine, and oranges. That is very, very good. That's, very, that's swell, actually. I really like that. This is one of the official drinks for Telemasters Everywhere. You guys better be drinking this when Mass Effect Legendary Edition comes out. If you happen to have Parfait or more on hand for whatever reason, you guys can try that as well. I'm actually curious about how that drink is gonna turn out because I know, as I said earlier, it's supposed to be sort of like a grapey vanilla flavor with uh, some flower, flowery notes on it. I'm not exactly sure how that will work out in the drink. If you guys have this, have this stuff on hand and if you try it at home and want to mix it together, please let me know down in the comments section about how that drink turns out. Otherwise, uh, stick to this. This is, this is really good. All right, Keyless Lemonade, that's a pass. I might need to help with the induction straw port, you know. On that note, I actually have a couple more tally themed drinks. One of them is actually going to be very, very simple. Uh, one of them is called the emergency induction port. Kind of an underwhelming drink uh, if you're a human, but if you're a Corian, uh, this is how you would get drunk without uh, completely killing yourself because of your weakened immune systems. Now, if you remember after Horizon and Mass Effect 3, after you deal with the whole situation with there with Miranda's dad, Tally will go to the bar and then make herself a drink, which she manages to get really drunk off of. The famous thing is she goes, she says, uh, Turian brandy, triple filtered, and then introduced to her suit through an emergency induction port, which is a straw. <laughs> That's a straw, Tally. Emergency induction port. One of the most famous lines from the game and it's really, really wholesome and very, very cute. So I decided to sort of interpret that in two different ways, right? One is take it literally, right? Uh, that amount of alcohol in like one shot would uh, kill Tally because Koreans have uh, weakened immune systems. I would take the trip of filterness as Tally watering it down with say two or three shots of water, uh, drinking it through a straw that way. So I think we're gonna give that a try. And then the other option would be is would be to make it into a sort of whiskey highball and sort of give it a little bit more kick and spice uh, using like say ginger beer or uh, some sort of soda that you guys have on hand. Yeah, we're gonna give that a try. We're gonna see what watered down whiskey tastes like. Let's get started. We're going to take our emergency induction port and we're now going to take a little bit of our whiskey. I'm gonna put half an ounce of whiskey in because this drink is for Tally and we don't want her to kill herself. And we're going to put say two shots of some water in there. Of course, again, so she doesn't die. I know this drink isn't gonna be very good, but hey, Tally is best girl after all, so this is, and again, this is the only way that she can actually get drunk, so. I am going to die. It's whiskey and water, man. I'm not really sure what else to say, but hey, if you're a Korean, this is your go-to drink. Go on, knock yourselves out. Oh, what the fuck, all right, guys, quick change of sets here. I apologize. Vegas, whenever I decide to render out the Kilis of Highball, the original footage that I got, crashes. So I'm going to just do this again and make a better version because the original version I used wine for whatever reason and I don't recall why. Maybe it's just for the purple color, but we're going to solve that real quick. Now, for those of you that don't know what a whiskey highball is, it's whiskey and uh, some ginger ale, club soda, or some ginger beer, which I do happen to have right here. You consider this a bit of an upgrade from the last drink that we got, um, which is, again, just whiskey and water. I thought we'd pretty this drink up a little bit more. Now, I think, to my recollection, the reason why I wanted to use wine was to give the drink a little bit of a purple color. Because Tyler's character design herself has uh, shades of purple, black, shades of white, and gold. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, Corianize the classic whiskey highball here. Instead of using two ounces of whiskey and then four to six ounces of ginger ale, uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut those portions roughly in half. Because Corians like Tally have weakened immune systems and probably really bad metabolism. So uh, if Tally probably just has like one or two of these, she'll be on the floor laughing her butt off. And again, we will be using our blackened whiskey and some ginger beer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, in you go. Crack open our ginger beer here. And of course, make sure the brand of ginger ale, club soda, or 
uh, ginger beer you're using is dextro friendly. We don't want Tally to die from anaphylactic shock or something. Because again, corians. And then I think we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna full send it with three ounces of ginger beer here instead of just the normal two. Because I did just throw in one ounce and we wanna go ahead and just balance it out a little bit. There's one, two, and three. And then of course we take our, uh, the most important ingredient of the drink, our emergency induction port, and we stick it into our cup. You know, if a straw is called emergency induction port, I wonder what Tally calls a cup. Let me know down in the comments. Let's have a sip. Put a big one at that. Yeah, that's good. Um, surprise, surprise, it is mostly ginger beer, but um, maybe I should use a little bit less so I can taste some of the whiskey, but that is very good. However, I think we can make this drink a little bit more tally themed, right? Because again, this is just, it's very, very um, greenish. I don't know if you guys can see that because of the light conditions we're under, but it's very, very green. As you may recall from some of the other drinks we use, we either have uh, some grenadine and uh, some raspberry simple syrup. Now, uh, whiskey highballs, again, are supposed to be very, very simple drinks. Again, again, it's just ginger beer and whiskey, and then put ice, and then you fill it up. So in the spirit of that, I'm not going to go ahead and use anything like, say, blue curacao, uh, some grenadine, uh, or anything like that to make it more... Uh, I don't know, purple. But we're gonna keep it simple, and we are gonna use some, something like, say, raspberry syrup. I'm gonna go ahead and use only about a half an ounce here, instead of uh, a full ounce or two ounces, because we don't want to overpower the ginger beer and the whiskey, which again is only one ounce of uh, our blackened whiskey and two ounces of our ginger beer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that up real quick, and we'll be back in a second. All right, not the purplest color that we were looking for, but again, this should actually be pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. This is the true version of the Kilisa Highball. And uh, here we go, up the induction port. Yeah, that's really good. Maybe use a quarter ounce of our raspberry simple syrup instead of the a whole half an ounce, because uh, I, I can kind of taste the whiskey still, and I can kind of taste the smokiness of it, but then again, that could also be the uh, the flavor of the ginger beer there. Now this stuff is actually really, really good together. Uh, the raspberry syrup complements the uh, ginger beer very, very well, in addition to the smoky flavor of our blackened whiskey. Yeah, you can probably turn this into an actual cocktail with this stuff, and then again, just um, make the proportions bigger or whatever. But if you want to make this sort of a pseudo highball like uh, I've been trying to do, maybe cut the, the portion that I use for the raspberry simple syrup uh, in half, which is uh, which would be a quarter ounce. And maybe uh, a little bit more ginger beer, and then maybe another half an ounce of whiskey uh, to boot, because uh, this is very this is a very overpowering sort of taste again with uh, the ginger beer and the blackened whiskey. Yeah, I call this one a success. Very very cool, very nice drink, and I recommend you make it. Just try not to pass out in the bathroom like Tally does at the party. Because I'm hardcore, like Ezo, baby. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next big thing. Remember what we said on Ramok, just before you took down that Reaper? You said, I love you. And you said, Kila Salai. Nah, chica, I said Tequila Salai. Uh, Corian celebrates single tomorrow, right? All right, keeping up with the Tully themed drinks, we're gonna make something called a Tequila Salai. And of course, we're gonna need some tequila. Here's a recipe that I'm uh, using for this. Again, pulling from the Save Game article about uh, Mass Effect cocktails and stuff calls for one ounce of uh, gold colored tequila. I got uh, Jose Cuervo Especial. And then we also need one ounce of the uh, of clear tequila. And we also need some grenadine. And then we're also going to need some blue curacao. And then we're also going to need our Malibu rum. Now, uh, I suppose the idea for this drink is to make it sort of purplish. From what I can uh, sort of recall from this, this is supposed to be something similar to a tequila sunrise. But at the same time, also no. Uh, tequila sunrise is supposed to have uh, orange juice in it, hence the, uh, you know, make it sort of an orangey color. With all this stuff, hopefully it'll come out with a nice little purple color and Hopefully it'll taste good at the same time. Well, Tally is a, um, you know, a bottle of sunshine, as it were. She's really sweet. Which, maybe that might be reflected in this drink, maybe, maybe not. First off, you're gonna need something like, say, a highball glass. Uh, I don't have a highball glass, I just have a normal glass. Fill it with ice, and we're supposed to just pour everything over, and I guess just mix it around. So, let's get into it. Yeah, that's tequila, right? One ounce of the gold tequila. And then we need another ounce of the silver tequila. Now, I suppose you can also use rum for this, um, which I actually do have on hand, but I'm gonna just try and test out this recipe right quick, see how that turns out. Then we're gonna need half an ounce of our grenadine. Give it that, a nice little red color. 
Then we're gonna need an equal amount, that is half an ounce, of our blue curacao. And once we mix that all up, that should make a nice purple color, which we can already, you can already kind of see that. It's making a, a nice little purple color with the red. And then, again, half an ounce of our Malibu rum. Now, question for you guys, is Malibu supposed to smell like sunscreen? I don't know, it's, that's just weird to me, man. It's supposed to smell like coconut, not something you slather on yourself to avoid getting skin cancer. All right, let's mix this all up. Should be getting a nice purple color here. One tequila salai. It's got that nice purple color in addition with the ice in there. Let's, let's take a whiff before we take a sip. I can smell, uh, maybe it's because I put it in last, but I can definitely smell the Malibu. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Uh, anyway, tequila salai by the home world of which we will see one day. Down the hatch. That is, that is quite good, actually. Again, I can mostly taste, uh, you have the, the Malibu and the tequila work together very nicely to give it this really sort of sharp but also kind of coconutty sweet flavor. And the grenadine also helps as well to give it those little tiny notes of pomegranate. Let's take another sip. Yeah, that is a unique flavor. Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure how to place that. Um, it's very refreshing, I'll give you that. Uh, especially because, uh, you know, we're approaching summer. Same thing with the other drinks that I made uh, with... Uh, uh, the, the ones thing about around Ashley and Liara. Uh, all these would be excellent tiki drinks. Bring like a like a, a liter of the stuff to like a to like your beach or whatever. Or you know even if you're just chilling outside, make yourself one of these, lounge out, put up one of those weird mirror things, get skin cancer, and then just enjoy yourself. You know. Yeah, the 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 Malibu and the tequila really go together very nicely, and everything else just complements that flavor. That's really good. And the the blue curacao in there as well is also. It's also a very weird and unique flavor as well. Um, it kind of mixes, it stands out with the, the, the Malibu and everything else as well. It's, it's a weird flavor and I feel like I need to keep drinking to, to figure it out, so down the hatch. If I was going to describe it, I'd say it tastes frosty. Uh, the blue curacao definitely kind of overpowers everything. Maybe a little bit with the grenadine as well. The tequila is fine. Uh, the Malibu. Like the blue curacao and the Malibu definitely overpower everything else in the drink. I wonder how different it would taste if uh, I didn't include any ice in the drink. Yeah, overall, this is not horrible. Uh, it, it is enjoyable. It is in that not horrible to enjoyable range. I, I would probably make this in the future uh, if I can remember the ingredients. But yeah, not bad. Oh, God damn it, not again! Bust it! Tally, are you okay? Yep. Yeah. You want to see my tattoo? I don't think you have a tattoo, Tally. Second verse, same as the first. Uh, Vegas also won't let me render out this section of this wonderful cocktail, but that was probably for the best because I have a way better idea this time. We're gonna make something called an Omni Tattoo. By itself, it's not a very unique drink, but it's the presentation that really matters here. And for context for this particular drink, uh, many of you may remember from a part of the Citadel DLC's party, you can find Tally passed out in the bathroom, sort of just, you know, being all drunk and happy and stuff. Uh, very, very cute and very, very wholesome. But the standout part to me that is, uh, is how she describes this Omni tattoo that she got, which is a holographic tattoo. Uh, Jack managed to convince her to get a tattoo under her environmental suit, which Tally herself describes as follows. You want to know what it is? You want to know? It's a pretty bird. Made of rainbows, it is flying out of the eye hole of a skull, being held in the mouth of a thresher maw with a naked woman holding a sword on its back. Jack said you'd think it was hot. So of course I want rainbows, skull, thresher maw, sword. I can't make a drink out of a sword, that would be really weird. Thresher Malls don't exist, or we haven't discovered them yet. And if I include that other ingredient, I can't show that on YouTube and I'll get demonetized and probably banned off the platform. But then I thought, skull, rainbows, bird. I got it. So there's this drink called the Rainbow Drink. It doesn't exactly have a name, although the name is kind of descriptive. Essentially, it's supposed to look like this. I made a little test drive earlier just to make sure I could do this. The drink itself involves some blue curacao, some grenadine, some orange juice, and some vodka. 
And how you would normally make the drink is as follows. So you would take a highball glass, put 10 milliliters of grenadine at the bottom of the glass, fill up the glass with some ice, add the orange juice until it fills up to 3 quarters of the cup, and let me clarify and say that's not a 3 quarter cup. You take the same cup that you put the grenadine in and fill that cup 3 quarters of the way up with orange juice. Take the bar spoon, stick it at the bottom of the glass, and then sort of twist it around like this with the grenadine. And then you have a nice little red and orange layer with that. And then what you do, you take your blue curacao and vodka, you combine that in a second glass. Again, agitate that a little bit with the bar spoon, dump it over the ice and the drink, and then stick the bar spoon again in the side and then sort of agitate that as well. And it should come out looking something like this. A very, very nice rainbow drink, very, very nice rainbow tiki drink. It tastes mostly like orange juice, but then again, you can also taste the little grenadine and the blue curacao and a little bit of the uh, kick that the vodka offers. But we're not going to go ahead and make anything that boring, right? We need something a little bit special. So um, you guys are probably wondering, what the heck is in this? It's a skull. It's a skull glass. <laughs> I found this off Amazon uh, and I instantly went, I have to make a drink with this. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make the Omni Tattoo with this weird looking uh, skull glass. Now the challenge for this drink is I need to actually cut some of the portions in half because uh, the recipe that I base this off of uses a normal highball glass, which is anywhere from 200 to 300 milliliters. I would need to actually go ahead and reduce those ingredients a little bit. So we need to do some math here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some math. So the skull glass I wrote off Amazon, the 150 milliliter model is closer to 135 milliliters or 140 milliliters rather than the amount advertised, which is 150 milliliters. Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem. We just saw it through simple proportions. For example, the amount of blue curacao we need to use here is 21, which we can get through some cross multiplication. So I write the equation 250 over 35 equals 150 over X, with X being the reduced portion of blue curacao we're supposed to put into the drink, with 35 being the portion needed for a 250 milliliter glass. Through some cross multiplication, we get 35 times 150 over 250, and we're left with X being 21. But now we know the true measurements of the glass, this is where it gets a little bit weird. If we calculate the same measurements for the blue curacao being 35 milliliters in a 250 milliliter glass, then we're left with X equals about 18.9, which of course we could round that up to 20. But we also have to consider a few other things. We are working within a very small container here to make this drink. As soon as we put the orange juice in the water after the grenadine, the ice is going to melt the ice a little bit, diluting the drink with some water. You can actually hear the, the ice kind of squelching under that. Because of this, we need to be careful of how much spirits and other stuff that we add to this drink, because the water is going to dilute it and add more stuff anyway. Given this, I decided to run everything down to about 15 milliliters for the blue curacao measurement. I also apply the school of thought to the vodka and the grenadine, taking into account the amount of water that's going to be in this drink after I pull all the spirits on top of it. So if you're doing your math right, cross multiplying 10 times 35 over 250, which would be about 5.4, which is the amount of grenadine and vodka that we're going to be using in this drink. Again, keeping in mind that all these spirits are going to melt the ice inside the drink already, I decided to cut my proportions down to about 2 for the vodka and the grenadine. As a last minute decision, I decided to omit the vodka from the drink. We are again still working within a confined space, and I thought the vodka would get rid of the ice and completely ruin the drink by melting the rest of the ice and therefore making the cocktail seem a bit watered down when that's really not the case. To make up for the alcoholic content that the vodka is supposed to provide, I doubled up on portions of blue curacao. Taking everything into account, these are the measurements for my specific drink for this specific glass for this specific cocktail. If you have a bigger or smaller glass, of course, use the proportions I provided earlier. But Badger Knight, how do you make the drink? How do I make it look like a rainbow? I'm glad you asked, Jimmy. Let's jump right back into the set. While this drink might seem insanely complicated at first, it's actually quite easy to make. You just need to be a little bit careful here. So to start, we're going to go ahead and only use two milliliters of our grenadine. And then we're supposed to fill it with ice. Now, I can't fill it with ice, per se, but we can do this. Then we're going to go fill the rest up with some OJ. Be very careful about this. While the orange juice might have actually done this already, it is a little bit orangey, but we're going to go ahead and just agitate this. Make a little bit of a red light at the bottom of the glass. I don't know, that might be hard to see under the light, but that is the, there is a solid difference between the orange and the red. And then in a separate cup, we're going to combine 3 milliliters of our blue curacao into a separate cup. Very nice. And then, in you go. Take the same bar spoon, and then do this. Dump it over the bar spoon, very carefully, into the top of the glass. Very slowly. And then, uh, we're not quite done yet, although if you guys want to go ahead and just have a sip of this, that's fine. If you guys want more of the green, for aesthetic purposes, and of course we're doing a video on this, you want to go ahead and take your bar spoon on the end here, and then just give this a little bit of a swirl. Because of how density works, we can actually see that in the middle of the cocktail, it's kind of green. 
I'm actually quite pleased with this. This is very good. Um, now, question is, is it going to taste as good? Uh, let's find out. So, in goes the Omni Tattoo. I'm sure Tally and Jack would be pleased. Do we say Kilisalai or Krabal? This has a Thresher Maw on it, but then it's also a tattoo that's on Tally. Kilis or Krabal? But by the homeworld, I wish to victory or death. Ah, I almost forgot. This is a Tally drink, so of course she wanted an emergency induction port. So, in we go. That is very good. Wow. Yeah, I just gulped that one down, didn't I? I mean, yeah, the, the drink is, again, three quarters orange juice. I mean, if I really just kind of smack my lips and my tongue around my mouth, you can kind of taste all the other spirits, especially the grenadine once you get to the bottom. Uh, it is supposed to be a layered drink, so uh, wouldn't, don't be surprised if you get, like, a, a full load of the orange juice. Yeah, that is very, very good. I would actually make that again. I think we have another winner in our hands. All right, let's move on to the next big thing. Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. All right, we're going to move away from the original cocktails for a minute and do uh, something that only a Krogan would do. Yes, we're going to do something called the Quad Kicker. Rex orders this drink from, or no, actually Rex doesn't order, order it from uh, the trainer in the Citadel DLC. Shepard actually does. Uh, he's sort of grilling uh, trainer about her uh, mixology talents or whatever as she's uh, making drinks for, I think, Edie, Grunt, and uh, Joker? Or it might have been Javik, I don't remember. And, of course, Shepard. Specialist trainer is preparing drinks. I had no idea you knew how. Try me. How about a quad kicker? Spiced rum, bourbon, ginger ale, no curry powder, I'm allergic. Uh, the quad kicker is a, uh, it's not something you put in, like, a full tall glass or, like, a margarita glass like this. You just put it in a little shot glass. And this drink contains... 10 milliliters of bourbon, 10, mil 10 milliliters of spice rum, we rec uh, recommend Captain Morgan's, and uh, 10 milliliters of ginger ale. Now, I don't have ginger ale, but I do have uh, ginger beer uh, from earlier. We do have a couple more bottles of that. Uh, the things I do for some views. But anyway, let's get started. So again, 10 milliliters of bourbon, 10 milliliters of spice rum, and ginger ale. Now, again, I don't have spice rum. I do, however, have the Fireball whiskey we used earlier. So we're just gonna go ahead and stack this with the blackened whiskey that we have, and again, don't worry about the brand for this. Um, it's not expensive whiskey per se. It just tastes a little bit like Jameson, with a again with a little bit of a smoky aftertaste. And if we combine this with the cinnamon whiskey and the ginger ale, we actually should have a decent drink. I'm gonna go get everything ready. I'm gonna go put this in our little mixing cup here, and we'll strain it out into a shot glass, and then schnozza. All right, we got everything together. We got our ice in the cup, and again, once again, we're just going to need. 10 milliliters of spice bourbon. Here we go. <laughs> I love the cork sounds. Because I'm an idiot, I forgot my bottle opener. Here we go. Oh. Hold on. Great. Now we're just going to go ahead and shake that up and then strain into our shot glass. I always get stuck. Okay. There's our quad kicker. It's got a nice little milky orange or a milky, it looks, <laughs> I'll be honest, it looks like piss. <laughs> yeah, that you smell the cinnamon, all right. Uh, now, again, I don't have the spiced rum needed to complete this drink. Hey, if it's called a, you know, if it's if it's supposed to be a drink that, that's supposed to kick you in the in the quad, then I think this is uh, acceptable. So here we go. And because this is a, a Krogan drink, I guess. Um, Corbal! Wow, that's actually really nice. Yeah, you could probably make that into a cocktail. The ginger beer and the fireball whiskey go together very nicely, as always. Uh, I couldn't taste, well, actually. Yeah, there's there's the whiskey. Uh, there's the blackened whiskey. You could just taste the uh, sort of vanilla -y, the vanilla flavor, Jameson flavor, with a little bit of the smoky aftertaste that this offers. That was pretty enjoyable. It's nice and cold, very enjoyable. Uh, not awful, actually, um, but yeah, that was really good. Props to Shepard for, for grilling trainer on her uh, mixology knowledge, dude. That was that was fantastic. I really did enjoy that. I wonder if he likes Japanese girls with a penchant for kleptomania. All right, 
right, with that enjoyable shot out of the way, uh, we're gonna move on to something a little bit different. And by different, I mean we're not gonna use, say, bourbon, vodka, whiskey, uh, that sort of thing. We're actually gonna pull out some sake. Uh, we're gonna make something called a memory stealer, which is, of course, a Kasumi Goto themed drink, who, if, of course, if you play Mass Effect, is the Normandy's resident thief, who was one of the first DLC characters ever implemented into Mass Effect 2. And curiously, Kasumi is the only female character that Shepard, uh, male or female, cannot romance. Which is a shame. I really do like Kasumi. Her reasons for doing so are completely justified. Her whole loyalty mission revolves around uh, her retrieving essentially memories of uh, her, I, I guess, boyfriend, husband named Keiji. So that's what we're gonna try and sort of theme this drink after. Now, strangely enough, this drink is, uh, this drink themed around Kasumi is uh, all about some sort of weird coffee mixture. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I understand the sake because Kasumi herself is Japanese, but the recipe, again, that I'm taking from uh, Save Game Online, recommends uh, some Baileys and Kahlua. Basically, this we're gonna make uh, a coffee sake, uh, which is kind of weird. I wouldn't picture Kasumi for a coffee kind of person, especially if we're gonna make uh, a cocktail flavor or a cocktail uh, in her namesake. The sake that I have here is called uh, Genkaken. I, I, can I can? Uh, this word on screen, uh, I can't pronounce Japanese words to save my life, but that brand of, uh, sake, it's, it, it was, it was the, the only one of two sake brands I could actually find at my, uh, my local liquor store. But, yeah, anyway, we're just gonna go ahead with it, try and test it out. So anyway, we're gonna need an ounce of the Bailey's Irish Cream, three quarters of an ounce of Kahlua, uh, half an ounce of sake, because Japan. Consume is Japanese, um, and we're also gonna need hot or iced coffee to fill. Now I don't have I, I don't have hot or iced coffee available at the moment, and I'm not about to go through all that hassle just to make iced coffee like I did for the Tasty Tanker. That was a special drink. So what I actually do have on hand is some coffee liqueur, and I do have ice. So we're just gonna go ahead and sort of combine that. Uh, but we're not gonna go fill it up with coffee liqueur and stuff. No, we're just we're gonna take it back. All right, let's get started. We're gonna need one ounce of Bailey's Irish Cream. We're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of Kahlua. One ounce of sake. We're gonna say do an ounce of the uh, coffee liqueur that we have here, and then just go from there. I suppose the theory about the Bailey's Irish Cream is that it's supposed to complement the sake very well, because sake, of course, or at least the one I have, has a very uh, sort of creamy texture. Mm. If I were to make this drink, I would actually include a bit more of the sake and maybe a bit less of the Bailey's. But hey, we're just gonna follow the recipe. There you go right there. Going in, and then um, we're gonna go with because I'm not a big coffee guy. And then again, it doesn't tell me if to, to shake or stir it, but I don't think you shake coffee, so we're gonna go ahead and stir this up. We're just gonna go ahead and just strain it into this glass here. There we go. Is that nice little? Got that nice little coffee look, and again, I apologize for using a, a tinted glass, but you know you should you should be able to see that. That does look like coffee. Before we drink again, let's give it a bit of a sniff. I can smell the sake and the Bailey's, but that's about it. Yeah, mostly it's mostly the Bailey's, which is which again isn't a surprise. It's that's the most amount of proportions I put into it. Yeah. All right, enough delay. Corbal, as a crow can say. Oh, that is heavenly! Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's great. That's like, that's like an alcoholic uh, mochaccino, man. That is fucking fantastic. 10 out of 10, absolute fantastic, the memory stealer here. Uh, this would actually be really good. I'm actually regretting not going out and just making a, a quick pot of uh, uh, coffee real quick, just to compliment this. But hey, the coffee liqueur did a good job. The ice... Did a good job just freezing all that liquor really quick. Oh, that's, that is so good. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Please make this right now. Fantastic. Oh my God. Uh. We're gonna make a uh, Jack themed drink here called the Psychotic Biotic, which is based off something that Trainer says in the game. Jack asked for a mix of vodka, whiskey, bourbon, and any energy drink I can find. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna put it into a shot glass. So I got my can of Red Bull here, then we got our Tito's, and then of course we have our whiskey, and then especially saved up just for this drink, we're gonna have some Hennessy in there, uh, a little bit of cognac in this. All right, let's just get started. So again, uh, like all the other drinks, we're gonna put it into this glass, 
uh, fill up with ice, uh, portion it out, and then just pour it and strain it into a shot glass, and then schnozza. Let's go. All right, we got our energy drink opened here, and again, it only calls for what? Uh, six milliliters, so we're just gonna round that down to five. I'm sure if you want to make something, like say, um, something a little bit more interesting, you could pick all the different varieties of monster that they have, like uh, Monster Zero, maybe the coffee flavored uh, monster energy drink if you want to make this drink sort of coffee flavored. Then we need six milliliters of vodka. Cap this all up, move this out of the way, and then we'll just shake it up and then again strain it into our shot glass. I will destroy you! Take a quick look first. Uh, I suspect this should smell a lot like uh, Red Bull and maybe a little less on the whiskey and bourbon and the Hennessy. No, I just smell the I just smell the, the whiskey. I don't smell the Red Bull. Alright, well. There you go. If I might say so, this looks exactly like piss, uh, which is exactly what Red Bull looks like if you put it into a glass and then try to drink it that way. You could probably do this a bit more fancy-like uh, if you wanted to, say, go out and buy uh, some Monster, say, coffee, uh, some Monster Zero Sugar, and all the different other flavors that Red Bull has. I think they have watermelon now for some reason. So say if you want to give that a bit more flavor and didn't want to use, like, say, uh, liqueur or whatever, you could probably do that, come out with some different flavors, but uh, for now, in goes the psychotic biotic, and once again, Corbal! Yeah, I only taste the whiskey in that. It kind of reminds me of the highball that almost made me puke. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. That is, um, I don't know. There's not enough variety in there for me to really recommend it. It just tastes like watered down whiskey. Uh, that was, uh, that's not great. I must say that's that's that was uh, that was pretty terrible. Um, bottom tier. Would not recommend. Not very good. Now, what I suppose you can do is say uh, replace the the whiskey or the bourbon with say blue curacao, right? And you come out with say uh, depending on what whiskey you use again. Again, this gives us some some smokiness. Uh, I'd say use say blue curacao instead of the. Uh, either the whiskey or the bourbon, because those two are kind of redundant anyways. Because, uh, you know, Jack is biotic, biotics are blue, and you might come up with a sort of citrusy flavor instead of just uh, watered down Red Bull filled with vodka. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you guys have some other recipe that you're willing to try. Alright, let's move on to something that's actually a bit more palatable. I'm gonna need more wine. Get this woman more wine. And the theme of Jack, or I suppose the flip side of who Jack is, we're going to make a drink themed around Miranda. Uh, Miranda wants uh, a cocktail called Perfection, which is, of course, a reference to how she's, uh, by definition, genetically perfect. Although, uh, Miranda's character arc is a bit more nuanced about that. And I'm actually working on a character analysis, again, as part of my Dichotomy of Character series featuring Miranda. So if that's uploaded, uh, a card should appear right above here. And again, if you guys want to check out that playlist, in the description down below. Now this cocktail called Perfection, which again of course alludes to Miranda, calls for a strawberry liqueur, mango liqueur, melon liqueur, and vodka, and then pineapple juice to fill. As it so happens within the Citadel DLC, Miranda's kind of mad at Trainer or Shepard rather, or whoever decided to supply the alcohol for the party, that Shepard doesn't actually have strawberry liqueur. Miranda is unhappy because her glass of perfection calls for strawberry liqueur, which we don't have. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make two drinks. We're going to make one without the strawberry liqueur, and one with the strawberry liqueur, and we'll sort of round it out like that, see which one is better. I'm guessing the strawberry liqueur one, or the version with the strawberry liqueur, should be objectively better than the last one. Of course, adding a bit more flavor to an already fruity cocktail shouldn't be totally horrible. Let's get started. Now one thing I should note here, guys, as I'm sort of unwrapping this, we're using uh, Drillond Mango Liqueur here. And then we have our uh, Dicabor Strawberry Liqueur, which, of course, we're gonna make our first drink without that. Our Melon Liqueur, Mr. Stacks. All right, and then, of course, we have our Pineapple Juice. Okay. All right, let's get started. And again, uh, it doesn't tell me whether to shake or stir this cocktail, or just put it in a glass filled with ice, but uh, I have a feeling that Miranda might want this shaken, so we're gonna go ahead and do that instead. Again, we're gonna make the cocktail first without the strawberry liqueur and then add that later. So first, it goes to make the liqueur with that nice little pop. And we need a, we need a third ounce of the mango liqueur. There you go, our melon liqueur. 
and a third of vodka. All right, so that's everything. All right, take a quick whiff before I put it in. It almost smells minty, I don't know why, that's weird. I'm just gonna go ahead and just strain this because I can. Now you understand why Miranda doesn't like this. It's got a little, it's got a green color. And we'll just pour in a little bit of pineapple juice to fill that. There we go, okay. Okay, here's our glass of perfection from Miranda without the strawberry liqueur. Let's have a sip. Yeah, too much of the pineapple in there. My fault. But hey, that's not bad. Let's just try and get to the bottom of this real quick. I just taste pineapple. I'll be honest. Hey, maybe the strawberry would add some some more flavor. We're gonna go ahead and try that, but I can totally understand why Miranda was mad about not having the strawberry liqueur she wanted in her drink. This is kind of crappy. Yeah, I don't taste anything else but the pineapple, really. There's a there's a small hint of something else in there, but I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe there's some bit of the mango in there, but then again, that just gets muddled up with the pineapple. And the, the, the melon liqueur also gets muddled up in there. So, we're gonna try this again with the strawberry liqueur. All right, let's try this again. In you go. Strawberry liqueur this time. And that is half an ounce. Get a whiff. Yeah, you can definitely smell the strawberry now. This is gonna be a, a big difference. We have a nice little pinkish red color now. Nice little orangey red color there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pineapple juice in. That actually looks a bit more appealing. And uh, I did just make a mess of my table, but you know, all in the name of making uh, quite literally the world's most perfect cocktail, or supposedly. Instead of Corbal, let's say this. Cerberus did nothing wrong. Yeah, um, again, I just, I, I taste nothing but pineapple. It, it really overpowers the rest of the drink. Pineapple's a really sweet flavor, and uh, it kind of clashes with everything else here. I'm thinking that if you guys want to try this cocktail at home, either up the portions of, um, of the various liqueurs that you use, and then downplay the mango a little bit. So the mango is a bit of an undertone rather than it being literally the entire drink. Um, if you guys are really looking to make this at home for yourself while you're playing Legendary Edition. But yeah, let's, let's just try and get to the bottom of this, see if I can actually make out the different bits of liqueurs. I taste pineapple and the strong burn of, and, and a slight tinge of uh, burning alcohol, but that's about it. Damn, I'm actually really disappointed in that. I knew the psychotic biotic would, would suck, because uh, it is essentially just um, a whiskey highball, but replace the water with uh, with an energy drink like Red Bull. But this, yeah, I just taste pineapple juice, guys. Um, again, I think this is an error on my part. If you guys want to go ahead and make this drink yourself, let me know down in the comments section. I'm pretty sure if you um, change up the ratios for the drink, uh, this would be a bit more enjoyable. You can taste all the various liqueurs. Uh, not awful, but... Again, disappointing. If you gave me that cup and just told me it was just pineapple juice in it, I would absolutely believe you. And not be understanding why I was just suddenly going like this. Anyway, onwards and upwards to something that I think you guys would actually like. Uh, a drink that I kind of based off of something else from the game that I put my own little spin on it. We'll see how that goes. Next drink. These guys were a waste of skin. Scales. Whatever. I'm on Kira, Lord of Hunters. Grant that my hands be steady, my aim be true, and my feet swift. All right, hopefully this next drink will be a bit more, I don't know, unique and palatable than uh, perfection. This particular cocktail is based around Thane Creos, uh, the Normandy SR2's resident assassin warrior monk, I suppose you could call him. It's called Drell Skin Venom. Now, Drell Skin Venom isn't something that Thane himself orders on uh, during the Citadel DLC, because by the time you start that, uh, he is unfortunately very dead. It is a drink that Shepard uh, can order from uh, the bartender at the casino or inquire about anyways. Basically, what this drink is, we're just gonna make a martini with a little special twist that not everyone's gonna have access to. This drink is gonna be around the Normandy SR2's resident assassin slash warrior monk, Thane Krios. 
Thane is just really awesome. Uh, th this is really weird contrast with him wanting to, you know, being a contract killer and having a little bit more of a religious side to him, where he respects his targets and stuff like that. So I wanted to go ahead and capture that sort of grace within within this drink. So what I basically got from this drink is that it's just a normal martini to sort of give credence to um, Thane's sort of spiritual side. He's a professional killer, much like James Bond, but with a little bit more of a religious twist to him. And I also have some special stuff to substitute for the Drell Skin Venom, if you guys catch my meaning. So let's go ahead and make a quick martini, and then we'll go ahead and add our mystery ingredient. So a normal martini calls for either normally gin or vodka. I have vodka on hand, so I'm going to be using that. I have Tito's, and we have our uh, dry vermouth. And then we have our dry vermouth, our martini and Ross sweet vermouth there and uh, a little splash of lemon juice to go on top. And of course, we have our olives and our toothpicks. All right, let's get started. There's our two ounces of vodka in there. And we need half an ounce of our dry vermouth here. In you go. We'll do a bit of a squeeze with the old lemon juice here. And of course, you know, there's the old adage from, say, James Bond, where, you know, shaken or stirred, there's practically no real difference in my eyes, or so I've heard. So we're just going to go ahead and shake it. Of course, we can't forget about our olive on the toothpick. <sighs> Fucking, oh, jeez. My hands are all wet from the, from the uh, condensation on the glass there. Glass is a little big, but there you go. One martini. And now we're gonna actually add our own little special ingredient here. I actually have some Drow Skin Venom on on hand here. If you decide to romance Thane as a female shepherd, uh, Morden will actually warn you about how um, ingesting certain uh, parts, let's say, of a male drill will actually uh, cause some mild hallucinations. Wait a minute, Morden, you're just yanking me around, aren't you? Shocking suggestion. Doctor-patient confidentiality, a sacred trust, would never dream of mockery. Unfortunately, uh, this sort of gel skin venom doesn't actually have any psychoactive components. But hey, if you live in an area in the world where you actually have access to psychoactive gel venom, go ahead, add it to the drink. Hey, maybe it'll be a bit, bit nice, but for right now, this is all I have. So let's go ahead and crack this open and pour a little bit in this drink and then just mix it up here with our butter knife. We're just gonna add uh, a splash, same as the lemon juice. Oh man, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me actually run to the camera real quick. Yeah, check this out. The Drell Skin Venom actually put a little drop inside of our cocktail. Uh, it is oil. Drell Skin Venom is known to be a little bit oily, so I would expect that at least. Fortunately, it doesn't really seem to, to mix well with the alcohol. Um, again, it is an oil, so I'm not sure how exactly this is going to blend well with the booze. But yeah, you can see all the little bubbles on the surface there. But yeah, you can see all of the, all the little bits of oil in there. Now, this is my first martini I've ever had in my entire life, and I'm worried I might actually uh, experience some mild hallucinations. So, here we go. Down the hatch. Mm. Yeah, that's that is uh Oh that's weird. Mm. <coughs> I never expected draw skin venom to have a sort of uh earthy taste. That is uh that is certainly a unique taste, I will say. Uh it's very, very earthy. Um and then you have the uh the the kick of the uh, of your vodka and or gin in addition with the dry vermouth. The earthy taste is very overpowering. If you have any uh, drill skin venom on hand, so maybe you can make some some sort of a watered down oily version of the drill skin oil here and then try and do something like that. And maybe you'll actually come up with a decent cocktail, but uh, I have a feeling I put way too much of, uh, of the venom in. Uh, I'd say go out and give this a try. It's a different and unique take on a martini. It helps you kind of relax a little bit, you know what I mean? It's different, but that's really all I have to say on the matter. So, let's move on. I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war! Alright, 
now we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, less drill skin venom and more uh, rum, okay? <laughs> we're gonna do something called uh, the Roco Loho. I am way too drunk to say that. Let's try that again. The next drink is gonna be something called the Rojo Loco. And if you want to hazard a guess, this is obviously uh, a drink themed after James Vega. All right, so as far as the Rojo Loco goes, we're going to need um, some sort of dark rum. The recipe recommends Havana, but I only have Picardi on hand, and that should do just fine. Now, the, the recipe also calls for something, a liqueur called Chambord. Now, Chambord is supposed to be the sort of grape raspberry liqueur. I'm gonna add uh, some vodka and some raspberry mix. Uh, as a substitute for that, because I don't have any reason to go out and buy Chambord. And then, of course, we fill up the rest with uh, raspberry cultural syrup, uh, a dash of lime, and then we fill to the top with some cranberry juice. And uh, once again, it doesn't tell me whether I should uh, strain, uh, mix, or shake the drink, so I'm just going to go ahead and shake the drink. Anyway, let's go ahead and add everything together and see what we come up with. One ounce of Havana Dark, or Bacardi. We're going to go ahead and do a quarter ounce of vodka and then fill up the rest with uh, our raspberry uh, simple sugar we have here. Again, just the normal recipe, one third of uh, raspberry cultural syrup. And then mix that all up with the vodka. We're going to go ahead and say add another quarter of that, with that raspberry flavor. Uh, of course, a dash of lime. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this all up and then strain it into this glass. Ah, come on, there we go. And as you may expect, it's a nice little pinkish red flavor. And fill with cranberry juice. We're not going to put a whole lot in. Just say maybe to about middle here. That should already be pretty cold. Now let's take a whiff before we go ahead and uh, schlonza. Here we go. I, I got, at the beginning, I just got a hint of the rum. Which, again, that, that should be pretty obvious as that's the most prevalent mixture within this drink. And then I got, immediately, I got the uh, the whiff of the cranberry juice. You can actually see the little, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but I can actually see the little bits of, uh, of raspberry sugar in there. So let's go ahead and uh, grab all. Hey, that's pretty pleasant. Maybe a little bit too much in the cranberry juice, but hey, that's not bad. Same deal with perfection, although the cranberry juice, um, the bitterness of the cranberry juice allows for the uh, the rum and all the other bits of spirits that are kept put into this thing to kind of shine through a little bit. Yeah, there's the dark rum and the, um, the raspberry flavor as well. Raspberry and cranberry, very well together. Um, I would enjoy this. I like this. Uh, I just wish it was a, bit, a little bit more cold. I was, uh, was running out of the old ice and the, uh, the alcohol unfortunately melted the rest of my ice that was in this cup. I'm sure if this was a little bit more colder, I would enjoy this a little bit more. Yeah, I really, really, really do like this. Very, very nice. Alright, dark rum, vodka, lots of raspberry, simple syrup there, a dash of lime and some cranberry juice. Can't go wrong with this. This is, this is pretty great. Rojo Loco, success. Very, very good. I recommend you make it. All right, moving on to the third to last cocktail we're gonna go ahead and make today. We're gonna make something called uh, Sex on the Citadel. Roger that in post, I'm getting ice. Ho ho, report to the shower as soon as possible. Well banged, okay? Ooh, that's even better than the number of testicles punchline. All right, so after that, rather impressive cocktail, we're gonna make something called Sex on the Citadel. Now this recipe calls for some vodka, uh, some Goldschlager or its various cheap knockoffs, uh, some sparkling apple cider, and some Metagel. I was gonna use our Drell Skin Venom as a substitute for our Metagel, but nah, I, I, I thought better of it. If this drink is basically analogous to Sex on the Beach, uh, I don't really think uh, an earthy sort of taste to that would really complement it that much. So we're gonna do something a little bit different here. I also do not have Goldschlager, nor do I want to buy it, because apparently, according to rumor, it makes you shit gold. I don't want to shit gold. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, it tastes exactly like some sort of spicy whiskey. So, again, we're going to be using our Fireball uh, cinnamon whiskey here to go ahead and complete this drink. And also, uh, we're going to be using uh, Martellini's uh, sparkling cider here. Now, this isn't alcoholic, but uh, again, it's all about the flavor. 
you know, it's all about that sort of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this open and get going here. And as for our Meta Gel, uh, I think, well, in, in the Mass Effect lore, it's an amoeba, as, as, as my understanding goes, that um, uh, has some ridiculous healing abilities. Similar to like, say, uh, that substance, that, that healing fluid that um, the ODST soldiers use in Halo, it's, it's got that sort of uh, healing intensity to it. I'm not exactly sure what to substitute for that, and uh, I'm definitely not going to be using the Jarell skin oil that we have. If we are indeed uh, banging on the Citadel, I don't want to taste dirt. That'd be pretty gross. I, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, omit that part of this cocktail for that specific reason. And also because it's oil, it doesn't mix well with uh, the water that's in the uh, rest of this booze. So it sort of just sits on the top. Let's go ahead and get everything else together. Now one thing I should note before you make this cocktail is that it doesn't actually uh, list any proportions to it. This cocktail is from a giant bomb uh, forum post. They don't exactly give any any amount of accurate proportions. So I guess it would depend on what you want to taste. I assume we want the cinnamon whiskey out the forefront as well as the uh, sparkling apple cider with the vodka. They sort of uh, get me drunk faster. So I'm gonna put one ounce of vodka in there and then two ounces of everything else and see where we come up with that. So let's get started. One ounce of cinnamon of uh, cinnamon whiskey. Two ounces of cinnamon whiskey. One ounce of vodka. And uh, I gotta open up this bottle. Oh yeah, this smells like apple, right? Two ounces of our sparkling apple cider. Now I actually couldn't find any uh, sparkling apple cider with alcohol in it, but I suppose if you can use, you guys can use something like say uh, uh, Angry Orchard or something similar to that. There's a lot of other similar ciders out there that do have alcohol in it that I'm sure it tastes similar to this. Doesn't say whether to shake or stir it. I personally prefer my drinks shaken, not stirred. Uh, fuck you, Jay. Fuck. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and strain it into this wonderful glass here. That is uh, apparently what sex in the Citadel looks like. Uh, it looks like a cup of piss. I guess, uh, Kerbal, down the hatch. God damn, that's really good. When you when you first take a sip, you taste the uh, the apple from the cider. Once you get it past your tongue and down your throat, uh, you then taste the um, the spiciness of the cinnamon whiskey. But yeah, if you switch this around in your mouth a little bit, you'll be able to get all the flavors from all of the booze that you decide to use. Yeah, there's the apple, and then there's the burn the cinnamon. This is a very layered and unique drink. Very very nice. Woo! All right, I think this one is also a winner. I think this one also belongs in either the uh, the A tier or the S tier. I would also recommend that you guys try this out for yourselves. Again, fuck around with the proportions. I recommend you try the apple cider first, make that the biggest proportion in the drink, and then follow it up with whatever else you decide to include. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and finish this and then move on to the next thing. We have two more drinks to go, but this one is going to require a little bit more creativity than I'm normally used to. When Trainer lists off all the other drinks, including the situation where Grunt asks what a, tanky, what a tasty tankard is, and Shepard uh, asks Trainer what a uh, quad kicker is, Edie says something along the lines of, uh, I wish I could be as drunk as you guys because, you know, she's a synthetic. Impressive. I almost wish I could experience intoxication. Trainer offers to make her a drink composed of fruit juice, vodka, cognac, white wine, and blue thessia. Interesting. Now one thing you guys should know is that Trainer doesn't necessarily settle on any ingredients or give accurate measurements to Edie on how this drink is supposed to be composed, so I had to sort of guess. That leaves it open to interpretation to myself and to you guys. So if you have any other uh, interpretations on how this cocktail is supposed to be made, let me know in the comment section down below. I myself have settled on uh, an ounce of lime juice, a half an ounce of vodka, half an ounce of cognac, which is of course our Hennessy right here, one ounce of white wine, and two ounces of blue thessia. Now, blue thessia sent me on a bit of a spin, right? The easiest solution to that would be to just use uh, some blue curacao here, but we've used blue curacao enough here. So I thought we might as well do something a little bit different. When you think of the word blue, what fruit flavor do you guys think of? If you said blueberry, you guys would be correct. So I managed to locate some Stella Rosa blueberry flavored wine. I've never had this before, but 
I think it would suit the drink quite nicely, as the recipe already calls for wine. However, the uh, drink trainer uh, recommends to Edie doesn't have a name, so I figured we'd go ahead and call it the Matriarch. You know how matriarchs are. They're the heads of the Asari government, the pinnacle of wisdom for the Asari. They live for over a thousand years, and the recipe also includes some wine. So I thought that, you know, we can go ahead and lean into the sort of snobbiness of uh, the Asari and just include the, uh, you know, how snobby people are with wine. The trash talking. That's another strategy that doesn't work on the Reapers. It didn't work on the Rachni either. Or the Krogan. Have the Asari ever won a war? The Asari have a culture that was exploring space while you were using stone-tipped spears. We're gonna stick with the original recipe that I came up with. We're gonna go ahead and use our blueberry wine first, and then maybe if I'm feeling up to it, we'll go ahead and use the blue curacao. If you guys have blue curacao at home and all the other ingredients, go ahead and try it yourself. And of course, let me down in the comment section down below if that drink is palatable enough for you. I'm sure people would appreciate it, including me. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Now, the fruit juice here is a bit of a challenge, right? So blueberries normally are a little bit tart. We have cranberries, which are normally kind of bitter and tart. And then we also have some uh, lime and lemon juice. I'm not really feeling like having another cranberry cocktail. So I think we're gonna go ahead and assume the fruit juice is lime here. I think that would go well with the blueberry flavor of the wine and maybe some of the citrusy flavor of the blue curacao. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in first and then follow up with a vodka, cognac, white wine, and our blue thessia, AKA our blue wine. I am worried now that this drink is gonna be overwhelmingly wine flavored, but we'll have to see how that goes. And vodka, our Tito's vodka. Uh, the only cognac I have right here is Hennessy. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary and we only need about half an ounce of that and that should finish off this. Here you go. We've already put the fruit juice in, the vodka, and the cognac, and now we just need our white wine. So let's go ahead and put that in. Yeah. And then we have our blue Thessia. I've never actually tried this wine. I'm just gonna take a quick swig real quick. Oh, that smells great. Oh my God, this smells absolutely heavenly. This is gonna look really bad on camera, but I'm just gonna have a swig just for, just, uh, just for posterity. This is our blue Thessia after all. This is the core of our drink. So of course, we need to test it. That is lovely. Absolutely lovely. I should have used this in the uh, the drink that I used, uh, that I made for uh, Intelli's image. Now, of course, um, of course, in line with what I said earlier, trainer doesn't exactly say how you're supposed to make this, whether you're supposed to shake it or stir it. Uh, I prefer my drinks shaken, so we're gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're just gonna stir it into this glass. It should already be cold. Um, as per all the ice that's currently in this cocktail shaker. So here we go. Ah! I think some wine actually spilled out of the cocktail shaker by mistake. Oh well. But uh, so again, we have a mixture of our fruit juice being lime juice, vodka, cognac, white wine, and our blueberry wine uh, masquerading as blue thessia. And we have a nice, we have a nice little uh, red flavor there from our wine. And let's just take a whiff before we drink it as per usual. Uh, it smells like blueberries. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty nice. I like that. Question for you guys down in the comments. How common is it for, say, a bartender to use wine in cocktails like this? I've never actually seen it done. So, here we go. Uh, we have the Asari Matriarch, Corbal. Very, very tart. Yeah, again, you can you can really taste the blueberry and the lime in that. Um, I rather enjoyed that. That's that's pretty good. Um, if you can chill the, the the wine before putting in this drink, I think that'd be pretty good. That's enjoyable. Uh, I think Edie uh, and her inability to get actually drunk, I feel sad for her, uh, would actually enjoy. But uh, yeah, blueberry wine with all these other ingredients would be pretty good. Uh, if you guys really want to actually test the ingredients, I would say try everything to be equal parts and then go from there. Of course, I think the uh, our blueberry wine or maybe our blue curacao would need to take the uh, the, the forefront of this. It would be front and foremost flavor of this drink. Uh, otherwise, I think we kind of lose the appeal because this is in a uh, Asari themed drink. And, uh, you know, when you think Asari, you naturally, th you naturally think uh, 
different colors of blue. On that topic, I'm sorry I actually have different, uh, you know, tones of, uh, or different skin colors. So that, they range from like purple to like uh, light blue. So maybe you could actually substitute some Roma wine for this, or maybe like a, a grape liqueur, if you guys can find that, or uh, some Chambord, or maybe some uh, Parfait Amour, if you guys have that on hand for some reason. But otherwise, this is actually really good. You know, actually, on second thought, I'm gonna go ahead and try the blue Curacao instead of the blue Thessia. We're still gonna have wine in this, we're still gonna have the white wine in addition with the fruit juice, vodka, and cognac. This is the version two of the Matriarch. So let's get started. Oh no. Small problem, we are out of our lemon juice, so we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and use the lime juice now. In you go. Two ounces of our blue curacao. The last mixture lacked a distinct blue color. Take down to the paint then. Yeah, that's more like it. How about that? Yeah, look at that. It's got a nice little blue color there. Oh, it's got a citrusy, uh, citrusy scent as well, uh, as opposed to the uh, the harsh sort of wine flavor. The Matriarch version two with the blue curacao instead of the white wine, instead of the uh, blueberry wine. It smells a bit more citrusy. Hopefully this cocktail will go down as nice as the last mixture. I'm a big fan of uh, the uh, blueberry wine now, so let's see how it goes. Crabal! Oh, yeah, mmm, 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 very tart. Uh, in retrospect, I should have dialed back a bit more on the lemon juice, maybe about half an ounce, maybe cut that in half. Yeah, all I can really taste is the lemon juice, so if you guys want to try this cocktail at home, cut the lemon juice in half, or maybe use something else, like say cranberry juice or orange juice. Other than the lemon juice, I can uh, taste a faint citrusy sort of taste from the blue curacao. If it wasn't for the, uh, the lemon juice overpowering everything else, I would be pretty okay with that. That is not terrible, um, but also isn't that great either. Very citrusy, extremely sweet. I'd still give it a try. It's not horrible, but if that's not necessarily your forte, I'll skip it over, make something else. I want to be able to walk a straight line. Jesse and Temple coming up. Are Asari drinks usually mild? Alright guys, this is the last drink for the video, and I appreciate you guys sticking to the end and watching me make some of my favorite cocktails from the Mass Effect universe. I encourage you guys to check out the rest of the videos on my channel, especially my Dichotomy of Character video series. This is more of a side project, something that I've wanted to do for a while. My Dichotomy of Character series is my main series of videos that I like to upload on this channel and is my main focus. So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, again, link is in the description and in the card that's going to be posted right up here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe for more content for myself. And without further ado, let's get into the last cocktail of this video. And this one is kind of a doozy. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the Shirley Temple cocktail, which includes two and a half ounces of uh, top shelf vodka, such as Tito's, which I happen to have, and one ounce of fresh lime juice, a quarter ounce of grenadine syrup, and three ounces of ginger beer, and the recipe calls for you to finish to garnish with lime, maraschino cherries, or brandy choke cherries. Now, this uh, drink that I'm going to call the Thessian Temple is a different sort of Mass effect -y twist on that. We're gonna essentially take all the red ingredients from the Shirley Temple and make them more blue. So instead of the grenadine, we're going to use our blue curacao right here. We're still going to use our vodka and our lemon lime. We're still gonna use our lemon lime soda or ginger beer. And because we've already opened our Thing of ginger beer earlier. We're just gonna go ahead and finish it up. I know I have a bottle of Sprite. You guys can go ahead and use it if you have Sprite available. Uh, I just don't feel like uh, wasting the rest of this ginger beer while it's opened. I can't really put the cap back on. But uh, yeah, and uh, instead of garnishing with lime, maraschino cherries, or brandy soap cherries, we're gonna go ahead and garnish the drink with blueberries. And uh, we're also gonna go ahead and put it in this margarita glass as a nice little send off to the rest of this video. And that being said guys, thank you guys for watching and let's go ahead and just get into the last cocktail of the video. This is the Thessian Temple and let's just get right into it.
As per the instructions for our normal um, Shirley Temple, we're gonna go ahead and place all of our ingredients except our ginger beer into a cocktail and add a large amount of ice. And uh, the drink actually this time calls for us to shake it instead of stir it. Uh, it's nice to actually have some instructions on that. So again, we're gonna need two ounces of our top shelf vodka, which in this case is going to be Tito's. Why is Tito's considered top shelf? Look, I know if all vodka tastes the same, or in theory tastes the same, but you know, it's a little bit weird. Uh, this one. And because though we're out of our lemon juice, we're gonna have to use lime juice instead, unfortunately. And an ounce and a half of our blue pure soap. Here we go. A lot of Asari themed drinks in this uh, in this video. If you guys kind of appreciate that, make sure you hit that like button. Here we go. Should be a nice little blue color. Yeah, there we go. That's really nice. Yeah. There's our blue Thessia. And that is a Thessian temple, but it's not quite done yet. We actually need to go ahead and actually add three ounces of our ginger beer for flavor. There's one. Oh, spilled that everywhere. That's fine. Wow. Take a look at that, guys. It's actually a really appealing looking drink, right? It's it's this nice little blue, cloudy color. It's got this nice little, um, as the Krogan say, one last time for this video, Kurball! Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you can definitely taste the Tito's in there. Hmm. Very, very unique sort of, uh, sort of burn. Um. I would, uh, I would consider just making everything equal parts again. The, the Tito's, the vodka is a little bit overpowering. It does burn quite a bit. However, if you are into that sort of shit, go ahead. Because it does just take the enjoyment out of the drink a little bit. It does burn a little bit. Um, as opposed to just making this a, a blue Curacao drink. So, again, uh, Corbal. This is very, very good. I really do like this. Yeah, very appealing. Uh, the ginger beer actually does add quite a bit of flavor to it. However, I should have used something like, say, a, uh, a lemon-lime soda, like the Sprite I have under the bar. That would add a little bit more flavor to the drink. And also, it would add a little bit of fizziness to the drink. Um, however, the, the ginger beer is also a, a very good and viable option for this. It is very, very good. It actually gives the drink a little bit of spice and kick, whereas uh, the vodka will normally just punch you in the gut. The uh, the drink, the uh, the ginger beer actually gives you the ginger beer actually gives it a reason to you know hit you in the stomach right here. This is very very good. I do like this, and it is a fantastic way to end this video. So if you guys have enjoyed this video and have followed along with me making these cocktails, kind of enjoying myself as well, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys have thought about this video. If you have any original cocktail ideas uh, that I should maybe try in some other future video, please do tell me down in the comment section. I really would appreciate that. I'll maybe consider trying them in the future. But as always, guys, this has been X Factor X, and I thank you guys for hanging out with me, making some nerdy cocktails for uh, one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next video. Anyway, guys, this has been X Factor X, and this has been Mass Effect Cocktails. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out of here, and goodbye for now.